Okay. Do you ever notice how whenever you turn on the television or you go to the latest celebrity gossip news site, there's always another celebrity who's cheated on their significant other? A few months ago, all we ever heard about was Tiger Woods and the latest victim he was sleeping with. And all the Tiger Woods jokes, such as a lion would never cheat on his wife, but a Tiger would. And what's the difference between Santa Claus and Tiger Woods? Santa stops at the three hoes. And now it's coming up again with Jesse James and all the women he cheated on Sandra Bullock with. Is it ever going to end? I may not be an expert on marriage, because I haven't been married yet, but I do know what it's like to see a marriage fail. My mom and dad are currently separated because my mom cheated on my dad, and it kind of ruined our family, but my, mom, but my dad always makes sure that my sister and I are okay and taken care of. But this leads to the question, whatever happened to marriages, couples staying together in sickness and health? Do vows mean anything anymore? Television host Larry King can't even make it work after being married seven different times. Today I, want to describe, or today, I want to persuade you all to make sure you make the right choice when you choose the person you want to spend the rest of your life. Marriage should be forever. Divorce should never be an option. Today, I'm going to, today I'm going to talk about how the sanctity of marriage has changed over the past 50 years, reasons why marriages don't work out, and reasons why couples should try everything in their power to make their marriage last. First, I want to talk about how the sanctity of marriage has changed over the past 50 years. Back in the day, it wasn't rare to see people getting married at 18, 19, 20 years old. But nowadays, we're waiting until we're 25 or 30 years old to get married. Now we want to make sure we're financially stable before we make important decisions and settle down, which isn't a bad thing, but marriage rates have been declining over the years. Now, marriage rates are declining because now we want it all. We want someone who we're compatible with, someone who is, who's a perfect 10 on our scale, someone who will see us for who we truly are, and someone who will love us for all the right reasons and help us be the person we want to become in life. We want someone who, oh wait. Nowadays, and, and, and it seems like we're not making a huge effort to make marriage last nowadays. Now we want someone who, okay. Nowadays it's easier to get a divorce than back in the day. In the early 1900s, it, was easy, it wasn't easy to get a divorce, and now it's almost as easy as saying I do. But we don't need to be making marriages last nowadays. Nowadays we're just looking for the easy way out. We need to look at the past and realize how our grandparents and our great-grandparents made it work after all the obstacles that were thrown with them over the years. My grandparents just celebrated their 50th wedding anniversary last year, and my other, my other grandparents were married for 46 happy years. These are the type of people we should look up to. Second, I want to talk about the reasons why marriages don't work out. 40% of all marriages end in divorce, according to divorcerate.org. Why are so many people getting divorced? Well, a lot of marriages aren't working out because people have unrealistic expectations in marriage. According to the article, Why Marriages Fail, it states that we tend to think that when we get married, we no longer have to try, that we've already won the prize. Partners usually begin to realize that marriage does not live up to the expectations that are implied in the world. One or more partners become resentful, hurt, or disappointed, not with each other, but with the fact that their, their fairy tale marriage does not live up to the expectations that are implied in the world. Over time, these unmet expectations can lead to an un enough unhappiness to make a meaningful compromise unbearable. We need to realize that marriage takes work and partners are going to have problems at one point or another. This leads to the second reason why most marriages don't work out, which is communication problems. According to the article, the top 10 reasons why marriages don't work out, it states that if a couple has communication problems prior to marriage, it is likely to get worse after tying the knot. It is important that, that both partners are able to discuss every aspect of marriage and on a regular basis. A marriage without two-way communication will not last long. When communication is lacking, minor problems can quickly become major problems. Lack of compatibility, financial problems, and problems with children and in-laws are all other reasons why marriages don't work out. Third, I want to talk about, talk about the reason why couples should try everything in their power to make their marriage last. Couples should go do counseling sessions, go on date nights, or doing things with just the two of them. Time is an important aspect of keeping your love alive. So time spent talking, sharing memories with each other is essential. According to the website, assortment.com, it states that it's easy to share the wealth, happiness, and joy when life smiles upon us. But we must also stand by our partners through the storms of financial hardships, illnesses, and conflicts. Do your part to keep your love alive in your marriage. Tell your spouse how often you feel about them, that you love them, why you love them, and why you want to spend the rest of your life with them. Emphasize the positive aspects in, in your marriage. Don't focus on the negative aspects. The more you invest in fun, friendship, and being there for your partner, the happier relationship will get over time, says Howard Markman, a psychologist who co-directs Denver University's Center for Marital and Family Studies. Parents should also stay together for the sake of the children. 
Dennis Meter, who is the author of Being a Man in a Woman's World, states that the highest form of selfishness is to breed. After all, children don't ask to be born. Parents choose to create little carbon copies of themselves. Thus, parents should stay together for the sake of the children. A married couple needs to put aside their differences and finish the job they started. Being a parent is a selfish job. It's not about you, it's about your children and what's best for them. In conclusion, if we realize how the sanctity of marriage has changed over the years, realize what makes marriages fail, and realize what helps marriages succeed, more marriages will work out in the future. Don't look for someone you can live with, find someone you can't live without. Don't keep up with the trends of 40% of all marriages ending in divorce. We need to realize that marriages will have ups and downs, but getting through, the, getting through the rough patches will only make you a stronger person. Now I have a cute little love story that I found online that I'd like to share with you guys. My grandpa died after 44 happy years married to my grandma. When he realized time was running out, he left her little notes all around the house telling her how much he loved her and for her to be strong and reminding her of the good times. Nine years later, she's still finding them. That's the type of person I want to find. Thank you for your time today. All right, Hillary, what did you think? I really liked the intro with all the quotes, and I thought it was very entertaining, and you really engaged the audience. Um, one thing that was distracting was the hand movement you kind of did, but there were some uh, awkward pauses, but overall it was really good. All the structural things are fine. We don't have any problems there. And I think that you've got pretty good research in the presentation. Um, there's one section right at the end where you're talking about staying together for the sake of the kids where your uh, proof here is really kind of a conclusionary statement and I think you could do a better job showing why that's important, what the consequences are to kids of uh, families you know, that uh, break up uh, and build up some justification there a little bit more because otherwise it just sounds like you're saying the opposite of what people often say uh, just because it fits in with your theme instead of giving us a good reason to believe that. But other than that, I thought the rest of the argument was uh, pretty straightforward. I thought on the second point especially, uh, you had some uh, good uh, cause-effect claims. I think you need a little bit more information on a couple of those points, and not necessarily statistical information or even the opinions of experts, but some examples to show what people, what you're talking about on these points. Sometimes it stays at a very abstract level, and when you start getting to all those suggestions, um, they also kind of go by quickly, and I think they need a little bit of personal nuance, and that's one of the things that prevents it from uh, connecting as well as it could, because I think the stuff that you have in the beginning, there's some funny stuff there. At the end, you've got the nice poignant little story uh, that you're telling, and you need a few more things like that in the body of the speech. Now, the, the energy level is good. I like the variety in your voice. Um, I think you do a very good job talking to the audience, but we have a couple of the same sort of things that we talked about before. You're rushing. You're going, you're, yeah, I know. <laughs> you got to take a deep breath a little bit, you know. And. It's, it's the journey. It's not the end point that you're looking at, you know, that sort of thing. So you got to pace yourself a little bit more, and, and I think that will help you connect with the audience more. Uh, but all the subject is good, and, and like I said, I think you engage with the audience more. And that... And the, and the delivery things that I'm talking about, they're the things that kind of step on the conclusion that you've got a really nice, poignant little story to finish off with. I think it's a great exit line. And, it, and if you could just sell it a little bit more instead of get through it as fast as you can, it, I think you know people would uh, respond more emotionally to it. As it is, it just it kind of comes up and goes by, and people are still thinking about it, and you're already done. And it's like, oh, yeah, that is that is kind of nice. And we ought to be thinking about it while you're talking to us. All right, thank you.